Hey everyone, in this lesson, we are going to be looking at cues and what they are and how we can use them in our games. So I have a little example right here, which um, is sort of just an abstract view of what you may have for your game in terms of a command system. Okay, if you've ever played The Sims or some RTS games, um, you might be familiar with the idea of giving commands to units, giving commands to the player. And we can stack those commands up so that once one is complete, they can move on to the next. So for example, let's just press play and we can say, okay, we want them to gather wood. We then want them to hunt. We then want them to build and then do some scouting. Well, we can then run the command. And as you can see, it will gather wood. It will then hunt, then build, then scout. Okay, so basically a queue is a list of things. It can be pretty much anything you want. We can add stuff to a queue. And then we can um, basically remove something from the queue at the start. So it's basically first in, first serve. Very similar to a real life queue. Um, if you're lining up to purchase something, for example, you would, you know, line up one person at a time. And then the person at the front of the line would then be served and they then move along. Okay, so let's hop over into our script now and have a look at how we can set this up. Okay, so here in my script, I've already got a couple functions already created um, ahead of time, just so uh, that I don't have to reconnect them to the buttons. But pretty much we have a add command button uh, function, which gets called when we click on a command button uh, on the UI. We then have run next command, which runs um, whatever command is up next, and then an update function to basically update the UI text. So what I'm gonna do is first of all, create myself a queue. So I'm gonna create a private variable. I'm gonna go queue. And then in angled brackets, we need to enter in the queue data type, which is going to be string, give it a name, we'll call it commands, and we'll initialize it like so. Now, a queue is in the same family as, for example, a list and a dictionary, okay? A queue is what is known as a collection. Now, when working with lists inside of C-sharp, a list is basically a variable which can hold many different elements. We can add stuff to a list, we can remove stuff from a list, we can access specific elements of a list by getting its index number and modifying it that way. Whereas with a queue, this is a much more simplified version. Um, you can think of it that way, okay? A much more simplified version of a list which has a very specific use case. Okay, with a queue, we can add stuff to the queue and basically then remove stuff from the queue. Okay, so it's basically, like I said before, um, first in, first serve. You add a bunch of stuff to the queue, the thing that was added first will be the first one to be removed. So how do we add something to our queue? Well, down here inside of the add command function, what we're going to do is we are going to call the nq function. So we'll go commands dot nq like so. And then pretty much we can then give it a element to add such as command. Okay, this is very similar to the add command for a list. We are basically adding a new element to this collection like so. Um, and that is pretty much it for adding stuff. Um, now in terms of removing stuff from a uh, queue, we need to call the dq function. So if we go down here to the run next command, what we can then do is just go commands.dq. And what this will do is this is going to remove the first element of our queue, okay? The thing that has been there the longest, it's going to remove it. Um, but it also returns it to us as well so that we can use it because, you know, there's no real point if we are adding stuff and removing them without ever being able to use it. So we can store this DQ. As you can see, it returns a string, and I'm going to store it in a string variable. So I'll create a string. We'll just call this one CMD. And this is going to be equal to command.dq. So this is going to take the first thing at the front of the queue, store it inside this string variable, and then remove it from the collection here. Then what we can do is just go debug.log, and we can just log that to the console like so. Okay. Um, now what we can do is go back into the editor here. Okay. Um, we can then press play. And the functionality we have so far is what we can do, we can go gather wood, gather stone, and hunt. Now, we should see in the console here, um, this queue be dequeued. So if I go run next command, there you see, gather wood, that was the first thing we added to the queue. Then we have gather stone, and then finally, we have hunt. So we're basically adding stuff to the queue, and then removing it from the front. Now, if I click run next command again, and try and dequeue, uh, we're going to have an error. And that is because, as you can see here, the queue is empty. 
So a quick way of debugging this error to make sure that this doesn't occur during uh, your proper runtime is we can add a little if statement at the top of our run next command function. And in here, we're just gonna go if command dot count equals zero, then we are just going to return, okay? We're not gonna do anything if we have no commands left. So we're just gonna skip over this. And we could even add in a little debug message here. We go debug.log, uh, we can just go no commands to run, okay? Just letting the user know that there's no more commands for them to run. Okay, so we have that all set up. Um, now, what I'm gonna do then is just go down to the update queued commands text, and I'm just gonna make it so that uh, our queued commands get displayed inside of that little text field. So for this, I'm just going to go up to the top, go using TM Pro because we want to create a text mesh pro reference here. Create a serialized field, a private TMP underscore text, call this commands text. And then down here in the update queued commands text, we are first going to set the text to be equal to string dot empty. And then we are gonna loop through each of our queued elements. So we're gonna go for each, uh, it's of type string, command in commands. And then pretty much we're just gonna go commands text dot text plus equals command. And then we'll also add a little comma at the end as well, just to separate them. Okay, like so. And then finally, we want to call this function whenever we run a command and whenever we add a command to our queue. All right, so we can save that, go back inside of the editor here. I'm just going to quickly connect up that text to the property here, press play. And now when we add our commands, we can see them be displayed at the top of the screen here. So we want to gather wood. We then want to maybe build a couple times, do some fishing, scout. And yeah, now when I run the next command, you can see that the first one is gather wood. So that is going to be ran. We then have build. We then have build again. We then have fish. And finally, scout. And if I keep clicking the button, you can see that little debug um, message that we added gets called here. So no commands to run. So yeah, a queue is um, a very specific collection with very specific use case. Um, but generally, if you are working on a game that has this sort of system where you might want to queue up commands or queue up certain events to happen. Um, queues are generally a good thing to use as you probably don't need the complexity of something like a list or a dictionary or an array and queues may just be what you need. So yeah, now in the future, whenever you run into um, a system or an issue where something like this comes in handy, you can always know that you can rely on using queues.